All right. Hello and welcome to the second Diving Deeper session for the Fulbright program. So this is for students who are students and alumni who are applying for the Fulbright U.S. student program to get to do a little bit of digging on what the personal statement is. It's one of the two essays um, that, that are part of the Fulbright application and to do some practice and some writing. So the goals of this session are to reflect on your interests, goals, and experiences as they might relate to Fulbright and give and receive substantive feedback on your personal statement essay draft. So just as a reminder that those of you who joined us last week for the Statement of Grant Purpose um, webinar, this will seem familiar, but I just did want to remind everyone about Fulbright and how we're framing all of our experiences and our thoughts and our essays kind of within the context of Fulbright writ large. So remember when you're writing your essays that Fulbright is the vehicle, not the destination. The goal is not to necessarily get a Fulbright. The goal is to hopefully get funding from Fulbright to do the thing that is your actual goal. So if you're planning to do research, the research is the goal, Fulbright is the vehicle. And then one of the questions that you'll want to answer with your application um, kind of throughout one of the themes you'll wanna address is why should Fulbright be the one to fund your project or program rather than another source? What is it about Fulbright that attracts you? Um, do you resonate with that mutual understanding? Are you interested in um, working with the government? You wanna get a taste of that? Are you gonna inform your national career? Like what, what's the, the reason that Fulbright is the one that you're applying to? And then think about how your interests align with Fulbright's mission. So again, like you have goals, Fulbright has goals, your institution or your community has goals. So thinking about how those goals align can help you strengthen your argument for why you should be doing this thing in this place with Fulbright's help. And then remember, Fulbright is all about fit. So really finding the program that is the best fit for you. And that's where you're going to be most competitive is where you can show that you are the best fit. Um, and if you have questions about that, happy to talk it through. But it's basically the program that makes you jump up and down and say, yes, this is what I need to be doing. So to remind, um, we have a Fulbright fit funnel, patent pending. So what you wanna address is why you, what are your qualifications, what are your interests, what are your passions? why this particular location? Is it where your research mentor is? Is it where there's a program that's unlike any other in the world um, or unlike ones that are offered in the United States? Um, is there a heritage connection or a language connection? Why this particular program? Um, so details of the program that are particularly interesting and relevant to you. Why is now a good time for you to undertake this project or um, program of study? And for those graduating seniors, that makes a lot of sense. Um, if you're taking time to reevaluate um, your professional goals, if you're if you're trying to deepen your professional development, just giving us some thought as to why now is the time for this. And then finally, why is Fulbright the vehicle that you've chosen? You could have chosen, I don't know, any a number of other fellowships that also send you internationally, but what is it about Fulbright that really draws you? So kind of as a secondary way to envision this, we flip the triangle the other way. And so as you think about your um, application, you wanna think about where your purpose, the fellowship's purpose and the community's purpose align. And that'll help you to um, really frame, frame your essay in a way that makes it clear why you need to do this thing in this place with Fulbright. So think about why you wanna go overseas, what are you hoping to accomplish? Um, how is it going to help you further your goals? Why would the fellowship want Americans to go overseas? What is it that Fulbright is hoping to invest in? Um, that mutual understanding piece is a really big one. And then finally, what are you bringing to your community? So you're not just going to a community to learn, you're also hoping, hopefully going to share some of your culture, some of your knowledge, some of your research experience. So what does what, what the community want to get out of your being there with them, your living, your studying there? And so that will help you to address um, those different purposes, and it can really help you create a feasible, which is a big word for Fulbright, feasible, and ethical proposal for education abroad that really leans into that mutual understanding rather than just going somewhere, taking the knowledge, and leaving without giving anything back. So really that mutuality is extremely important. Um, Heidi, if I could just kind yes. of jump in on that. I was just about that. to ask for your thoughts. Would you like yeah. To 
Yeah, really quickly. I think that um, I can't stress enough how important it is to really have that community purpose in mind and um, the, you know, that passion for the country you're going to be going to, even if um, that passion is new um, and maybe not something that you've wanted to do your whole life. But I think um, showing your passion for or at least your um, respect for that country and being very open to embracing the way of life there, the curiosity about that, uh, I think that that can really go a long way toward demonstrating how you will approach the Fulbright. Um, and if you are um, granted the Fulbright, how you will um, interact people with people while you're there and everything like that. So I think that like we know ourselves, we know our reason for doing things. And that's something that you'll probably feel very strongly about, but don't forget about that community purpose as well. And if you need to be doing some research, think about, are you reading current events that are going on there? Are you seeing what's happening in the news? Um, how well do you know the history? Like you don't have to know everything, but just kind of, this is the point in the process when if you're not doing that daily work, to really be engaged in that community, even from a distance, now is a really good time to start working that into your daily routine. Yeah, thank you for that. Yes, and we do encourage um, students to be doing the research, uh, applicants to be reading the news leading up to, especially to your Fulbright feedback session. Um, wow. Faculty will likely ask you questions about where you're headed and what's going on um, on the ground in the place that you want to be living for a year. So again, kind of thinking through like you're going to be living and being a part of this community. So what does that mean and how can you be proactive in that involvement? Thank you, Val. All right. So just a couple of notes about the personal statement essay itself. So first off, you get one page, which seems like not enough room for anything. Um, so it's one page, single spaced, um, 12 point font, one inch margins, the whole, the whole spiel. And that's where you have um, the space to really introduce yourself, to talk about your passions and your interests and your story as it relates to what you're hoping to do with Fulbright. So again, like thinking about it from the lens of like, what are your experiences? What are your passions? How have they prepared you for this experience that you're about to undertake? Just know that as you are drafting this, so I know y'all are um, still pretty heavy in the draft phase, but starting to refine and refine. Um, when you first start, please don't confine yourself to one page. That's going to be very unhelpful as you move forward. Um, so I would just do a brain dump, get everything out on the page, and then figure out where it goes, figure out what you keep, what you don't, and saving um, different discrete drafts so that you have draft one, draft two, draft three. So that way, if you wrote something in draft one and draft three, you're like, oh, I, I think I said this somewhere, you can go back and, and get that from earlier drafts. So that's really helpful. And plus you can see how your writing has evolved and how your story is kind of unfolding throughout those different drafts, which is, I don't know, as, a, as an advisor, I think that's kind of cool, but you may or may not, <laughs> but it's a fun thing to think about. So this personal statement is designed to tell your personal story and connect you to what you want to do for Fulbright. And the reason they include the personal statement is because not every country does an interview. So most countries, in fact, do not um, interview their candidates. So the personal statement is your way of getting of them getting to know you, getting to have an idea of who you are and how you would engage in that mutual understanding and that relationship building that's so central to Fulbright. Um, and then remember your audience. So when you're talking to like your audience, your people that you're writing this essay for, you're writing to kind of two distinct audiences. So the first round of reviews are going to be from US faculty, um, maybe Fulbright staff, but mostly faculty, people who um, are area experts or have experience in the language, experience in your area, in your discipline. So these are people who are going to be US faculty for the most part. So they will do the first round of, re of review for your application, and then they will offer their recommendation as to whether or not you move on to the second round of screening um, or not. And so that will happen in January. And after January, your application gets passed on to the, the host country, the Fulbright Commission or the U.S. Embassy at the host country that you are applying to. So those are going to be people who are also going to be looking at your application. So these are folks who are experts and faculty and staff in the locations that you're trying to, to travel to. So just remember that you have those two distinct audiences when you're writing your essay and try to kind of 
speak to both in the way that you're writing. And then it just kind of is a guideline. Everyday smart people is also your audience. So these people may not be complete experts in your field, but they are people who are decently educated, decently well read, and are interested in you and what you have to say. So just making sure that as you're crafting your argument that you are not using too much jargon or too much um, specific language that might not be accessible for the everyday smart person, but also not writing at such a low level that people feel like they're being kind of explained down to. So kind of striking that balance between like respecting folks' intelligence and then also uh, making sure that you're not using language that is too specific to what you're doing. I hope that makes sense. Um, and then finally, just keep in mind, how does this experience that you're proposing fit into your mid to long-term plan? So how is Fulbright your next logical step? What is it setting you up for? How are you going to continue this work post Fulbright? So that's one of the reminders down here make it make sense so basically you're you're trying to to talk through in your essays in your application as to why this is your next logical step why this makes sense for you and you want to make it make sense to those everyday smart people that are reading your application and then personal statement reminders um, Fulbright is a citizen ambassadorship program so this is something where they're hoping that you will form those relationships you will build those mutual understanding um, especially among people who may or may not have met an American or haven't met an American that looks or sounds or is from the same place as you. Um, so they do define diversity for Fulbright very broadly. So geographic, age diversity, economic, racial, sexual orientation, gender identity, kind of anything you could think of. Fulbright wants their program to really reflect um, the United States as a whole. So they're trying to get all sorts of different American experiences um, out into the world. So when you're thinking about this, think about how you're going to bring your specific American culture and your specific American experience abroad. Um, I grew up in the Midwest and we play euchre and eat pasties and um, have door walls and burners and probably half of you who are down from the South don't even know what I'm talking about. So thinking about the ways that um, your specific American experience is positioned so that you can talk about it potentially in more detail. And then you also wanna um, spend some time thinking about how you're going to build those relationships while you're abroad and how you'll continue doing that type of relationship building after the program has ended. And as you're writing, consider these questions. Um, are you staying true to the mission of Fulbright to build mutual understanding, making sure that that's kind of a central piece? Are you clearly stating your goals? Um, don't make reviewers search for information. Um, don't make them guess at what you're trying to say. Um, and if they're if they have to search for something, that's usually not a good sign. So making sure that that you're clearly connecting your goals to what you're hoping to do and stating those in your essays. Um, is the reason you chose your country and award type clear to others? Um, so that can be something where a really well-written application can still have the question linger at the end, like, okay, but why do they need to go to Mongolia? Like, why why is this location and this um, this experience important to them? So if you know that, oh, I want to work with, and I learned that the Collaborative Rule of Law Center, which is on USC's campus, they actually had the ambassador from Mongolia here uh, a few weeks, a few months ago, probably now, um, to talk about like limiting uh, mineral smuggling at the borders of Mongolia. So like, if you're really into business and that's your interest, like th that's a very clear reason as to why you go to Mongolia, because you need to know what the conditions are on the ground with mineral smuggling and figuring out kind of what is, what's happening and what your, what the role is in that. So like, that would be something that would be pretty specific as to why you're doing that. If you're doing an ETA and you have a business background, Why'd you pick an ETA and not an MBA program or a similar business program? Um, maybe you're looking at a career change. Just making sure that you're explaining these things um, explicitly because Fulbrighter, Fulbright reviewers are not going to be able to guess that because they probably aren't going to talk to you. So this is your chance to really put it down in writing. And then again, the examples that you're using, um, the stories that you share, think about how those are tied to your goals and how they're what they're sharing about you. You really want to think about what these different things are saying about you, what you're hoping that um, you'll demonstrate by sharing the examples. So it's great if you learned to ride a bike when you were 15. 
what does that have to do with Fulbright? So if it does, if you're really excited to get into Viking culture in Amsterdam, awesome. If you just put that story in there, it doesn't connect, you might want to choose a different example, but we'll help you make it make sense. All right, so what are you going to be evaluated on? Um, and just a fair warning, I think my cat is about to show up, um, so we may get a surprise visitor. Um, so you're being evaluated, evaluated on the feasibility of your project or your activity proposal and the clarity of your grant purpose. This will mostly uh, come into play with the statement of grant purpose. So for this uh, personal statement, we're going to focus mostly on the sufficient background. So that's your academic preparation, professional co-curricular experiences and language skills to successfully carry out the program. Again, that can kind of be part of both essays. And then finally, evidence of personal adaptability, compelling motivation for pursuing Fulbright, and a clear connection to future goals, which is where the personal statement really will give you a space to do that. All right, so I'm gonna pause there. Val, what wisdom have you for us? Oh boy, um, well, lots of really great things um, said. A couple um, things that I thought of is um, whenever you're uh, working on a piece of writing that where the space in the word count is very limited. Um, first of all, as Heidi mentioned, don't be afraid to let yourself really overwrite when you're drafting. It can always be cut down, but you need to think about the types of examples that you are giving and what work they are doing. When you have limited space, everything that you mention, every word that you write, every example you give has to do more than one thing. So how can your examples show multiple facets of your character or say multiple things about you? So think about when you're maybe having to make some choices about what kinds of things to include. Think about the work that it's doing and what it's saying about you. Um, the other thing is that um, examples do not need to be extraordinary in order to be effective. Um, I think that sometimes there can be, when you're writing about yourself, there's a pressure to be really, really interesting. And you are interesting, and I don't mean to turn this into like, you know, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, but it kind of is. You're interesting simply by being you. And an experience that is yours is different from somebody else's and somebody will find that interesting. So don't feel like you need to go searching for these very extraordinary moments in your life. If there's one that stands out and clearly connects with Fulbright, by all means, please go with it. But don't panic if you feel like you don't have this like one glowing, shining, you know, sign in your life that has always pointed you toward Fulbright. Um, you can do a lot of work in your writing to show how that experience and reflect on that example and show us how it connects to Fulbright. So don't put that pressure on yourself. Um, and then I like to think of the personal statement as the origin story behind the statement of grant purpose. So it's this idea of, you know, if somebody reads your statement of grant purpose first, I don't know what order they read these in, but let's say they read that first and then they have the question. The statement of grant purpose does come first. Yeah, so it's like, who is the person behind this idea, behind this goal? How did they ever want to be able to be doing this thing? And I think that the um, the personal statement really does that. It is the, the reasoning behind it. So make sure that these two things that you're writing kind of play off of one another a little bit and make sure that's like, they don't have to be, you know, totally, totally connected. And Heidi can give more feedback on this, but just make sure that it's like, yeah, what's in your personal statement really backs up why on earth you would like to do this thing that you would like to be doing. So, yeah. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, and you may find that as you're going through this, and again, this is a process, it's a process. Um, so as you're going through it, you may find that you start off in one direction and end up in a completely different direction. You may write four, well, hopefully not four or five, but maybe four or five different completely different personal statements. And then it's a matter of sorting out and figuring out what's most true to you, what resonates with you. How do you want to tell your story for the Fulbright audience? Um, so really thinking about yourself as the final author, the final arbiter of what goes in your essay, you're going to get a lot of conflicting feedback. Um, I don't know how many of you have worked with kind of me and other faculty or your uh, faculty FPAs. Sometimes we give you conflicting advice. And so that's one of the things um, that comes through this process is the experience in taking those, those kind of contradictory, potentially contradictory um, instructions and figuring out what works for you, figuring out how you want to tell this story. Um, so know that you have ultimate authorship on everything. So again, you want you want to put this out there in a way that really reflects who you are. And we're here 
just to help and to ask questions and maybe to suggest some restructuring, but not to, to change or to put words in your mouth. So please do know that, um, that we're here to help you think through these things. Um, one last thing, if yes, I can just throw this in, Heidi, and this is something that maybe can come up um, as you're really kind of doing final revisions on things, but voice is incredibly effective. Um, it really draws in the reader. It helps establish that connection to you, even though they can't see you. So make sure your writing sounds like you. Um, and that's a really great way. It's a, yet another way of showing a facet of your personality without having to take up like excess words. So think about your writing style. Um, I think that like when you're drafting, don't confine yourself to being ultra formal. You can always add formality, but sometimes it's tough to go back, back in and add personality. So in the beginning stages, feel, you know, maybe feel a little bit freer in that. And you can always add more structure and formality if you need it. Yeah. Thank you for that. Yes. And if you are going to kind of use some of those more playful structures and approaches and a more playful voice, the personal statement is usually the place to do that. Um, don't feel like you have to have some sort of like gimmicky, like when I was a child or open on the scene, like you don't have to necessarily have those types of things. But if if you have something that like resonates with you, I had someone, um, I think one of the examples in the Fulbright team is someone who was really into crossword puzzles. And so they talked about their connecting experiences through the lens of like a crossword puzzle. So like one down, education, two across, da da da. And that was like a really fun thing. And it was very that. So it worked for them. So again, what works for you is not going to work for someone else, but you really find um, your voice and that balance between the formality and the creativity and showing kind of as much of yourself as you can in this one single space page of paper. And we're here to help. All right, wonderful. So I'm going to go ahead and conclude our recording there and we will move on to the peer review portion of our workshop.